you got to do. By the way, your phone is a gag. Yeah, I walked up here and r starts talking to me and I'm like, what on earth is going on? Oh, you want to do this? <laughs> tighten, tighten up. Just tighten up, that's all. Huddle it out and jump in there. He's nervous. Testing, one, two. Good morning, New Life Fellowship. Now let's do that again. Good morning, New Life Fellowship. <laughs> Stand if you would. We're going to pray and begin worship. Please join us down at Riverfront Park after service today. We've got so much chicken. You need to come down here and eat some of it. So that's this afternoon right after service. We'll be heading down there. we got chicken and potato salad and all kinds of good stuff. Amen. All right, grab the hand of the person next to you. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Good to see you all here. You made a good choice today to fellowship with the Lord. Now remember, today we're here to meet with God. Amen? We're not here to waste time playing a lot of religious, foolish games. Look at me for a minute. You are right with God because you trust Jesus, not because you're the greatest person that ever stepped on Amen. the planet, right? Amen. We know who the greatest person was who stepped on the planet, right? Yeah. Who was he? Jesus. Who? Jesus. That's right, it was Jesus. And he's made you right with God through the faith and the trust that you have in him, not through your behavior. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. You know why I say that, right? I don't always behave the way I should. I still got a long way to go, y'all. Pray for me, please. I know you have been praying. I can feel it. Thank you. God's been speaking to me this last week through all these tests and trials and all the stuff going on. I had to take my wife to the doctor every other day. That's not fun. I don't like going to the doctor. And he's nice. But it's much better to be right here together and fellowship with the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you so much for your divine presence today. Even as we prayed, as the worship team prayed this morning, Lord, we pray that those that are weighted down with heaviness of depression and anxiety, that feel like they're not worthy and not worth your love, God, I pray you lift that off of them today in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for a spirit of encouragement to come on your people, that they'll get so happy they're not even going to recognize themselves, that when they look in the mirror, they'll no longer be a sour puss, but a smile on that face. God, let them be blessed today. Let him receive the blessings of God. Let him walk in those blessings and realize what they are to them. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Let's worship the Lord together. You ready? You ready? Amen. Let's go. You got chains this morning that need to be broken. There's power in the name of Jesus, and he can break every one of your chains this morning. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. 
You're the all-sufficient sacrifice So freely given such a price But our redemption Heaven's gate swings wide There is power in the name of Jesus There is power in the name of Jesus There is power in the name of Jesus There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up to break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Father. 
It's who I am. 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 you to know this morning the scripture says this when father and mother forsake me the lord himself will take you up so if you feel like you've had a failure as a dad it's hard for you to understand this this morning you have a good good father who loves you so much that he sent his only son so that you might have life and you might have it in abundance so enjoy it this morning amen hallelujah Woo-hoo. now don't get excited y'all Hallelujah. You call me out upon the water. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never
screaming out, he's my counselor, he's my savior, oh my redeemer, oh my strong overbreaker. So I, so I will call, I will call upon your name, and I'll keep my eyes above these waves, and my soul will rest in your embrace. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Isn't he good? Hallelujah. Wow. His presence is here this morning. I mean, you can almost sense and feel the presence of God. That's what we're here for, is the fellowship with Him. Amen. You can be seated if you can there for just a minute. I want to have... Uh, Shane put the scripture up this morning. I've been meditating on this since last night and this morning. I got another word prepared, but I really felt like God wanted me to share this with you this morning. Uh, you know, you have a very determined enemy who wants to discourage you, depress you, distress you, uh, really turn you off to the things of God, wants you to take an offense so that you can't hear. When you get offended, you can't hear what God's saying. Are you hearing me? You better say amen. <laughs> so this morning, this is First Peter. Actually, I, Shane's got 8 through 9. I got 6 through 10. So I'm going to read a little extra of this, Shane. That's okay. He says, verse 6, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Set aside self-righteous pride. Boy, do we not need that. We, need, we don't need self-righteous pride, amen? I don't know about you, but... I think sometimes our failures are wonderful things. They remind us just how weak we are and how much we need Him. Amen. We think, oh, God's really upset because we're weak. Not really. He says His life of perfection, His life, His godly life is made perfect in us through our weakness. Doesn't make sense, does it? Does it? No. Thank you. Somebody, somebody heard that. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He might exalt you to a place of honor in His service at the appropriate time. I'll tell you what, it took me many years to learn that. I served in ministry as a children's church pastor for about three years. 
was a youth pastor for four years. And during that entire time, the Lord continued to try to teach me how to be humble so that I could serve Him in the right way. Amen? Casting all your cares. I love this uh, rhyme. Say your prayers and cast your cares. Say your prayers and cast your cares. Casting all your anxieties, worries, and concerns once and for all to Him because He cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. God's not off playing golf somewhere, okay? He's not off creating planets somewhere else. He's right here. And He wants to fellowship with you every day. From the morning when you get up and you shave your for us guys, to when you go to the store, take your kids to school, when you're in school and you're trying to study, all that. God wants to be involved in all those things in your life. Did you know that? What a wonderful God we serve. He doesn't. We leave Him alone, but He doesn't want to leave you alone. Can you say amen, some of you? Verse 8, be sober. Well, that's a big one right there. Hallelujah. Be sober. I'm telling you, God wants you that are dilly-dallying with drugs and alcohol to let it go. Be free of it. He wants to break the chains of any addiction on your life. Right? Doesn't matter what it is. It could be judgmentalism. It could be negativity. It could be spiritual pride. You need to get rid of those things, right? Let God set you free of that stuff. Amen. You can clap. That's a good one. <laughs> Sober in the Greek means to be well balanced and self disciplined in your thinking. Now, this is huge this morning. You've got to get this. All right? You with me? Because he says, be alert and cautious at all times. Why? Why must we be alert and cautious at all times? Yesterday I went and walked. Does anybody know what this stuff is? VBS? It's not Vacation Bible School. It's vanilla uh, bean spray. Yes, thank you. And it says here you've got to shake it to activate it. So I'm out walking, and, I, and I, see, I hear these buzzes going around my head. You know what that is, right? It's that, it's that Mexican word, mosquito, flying around, you know. And I'm rebuking that mosquito. But I noticed as much as I do this, they still come back, right? And if I don't use my VBS, they'll actually bite me. And that ain't fun. I actually got bit right there. Right by my neckline right here. I don't know how he got there, but he did. Okay? So I ran in and got my VBS and sprayed. And you know what happened? I walked outside. I didn't even hear a buzz. They don't like vanilla bean spray. It turns them off. Now, there's a spiritual application to this this morning. Because you not only have to be alert and cautious, because the enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking somebody to sting, seeking somebody to to bite, to devour, right? And He'll get you if you do not use protection. What is the protection you're supposed to use? A well-balanced mind. Because if you don't have a well-balanced mind, guess where the enemy's going to try to bite you? Not in your rear end, but in your top end. He's going to try to get you right here. So if you've got an area in your life that you're jealous about something, or you're angry over something, or you got unforgiveness, or you got a little rebelliousness in there, that's where the enemy's going to try to bite you at because he wants to ruin your life. But here's what we're going to say to him today, my brothers and sisters. And this is just two letters. You ready to say this with me to the enemy? N-O spells. No. We're not going to let him do it. No. We're just going to say no. We're going to be vigilant. We're going to be cautious. When the enemy starts crawling around us, we can hear him roaring. We are going to tell Him in the name of Jesus, get away from me. I am not receiving anything from you. Because the Bible says if you'll submit yourselves to God, that's step one. Father, my thinking is not altogether as what, what it should be. Lord, help me. Help me identify the areas in my mind and my thinking that are not right so that I might change them, Lord. I know I've got areas in there. I'm, my thinking just isn't right. Anybody relate to that in here? Yeah. Right. Amen. For some of you that are in relationship, that are married, you, you know what I'm talking about. You get tested in your mind all the time. Hallelujah. 
right? Once you say that and you submit yourselves to God, then there's been the next step. What's the next step? Resist the devil. Oh, oh, oh. Tell him to get lost. Make up your own song. You know, I'm just saying. Somebody said, you better not go on the road with that voice, brother. I say, amen. I'm not going to. We are just going to tell the enemy, no, we're going to resist him. And when he comes in and tells you you're no good or you made too many mistakes or you did that, I'll just remind him what Jesus did. Take, talk to Jesus, man. You know what? The enemy is like, well, actually Satan in the Greek language means accuser. So he's going to accuse you all the time. You did that wrong. You didn't do that right. Your attitude's wrong. You didn't do this right. This is wrong. You're not wrong here. You're wrong there. This ain't right. You did this wrong. You must be wrong too because this is wrong. And you've got to say, uh, 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 wait a minute, time out. I hired a lawyer that's on retainer. Right? I got a greatest lawyer there is. You know? You ever heard that story? What's a thousand lawyers at the bottom of a pond? Good start. That's not the kind of lawyer Jesus is, man. Jesus is a great lawyer. So when the enemy comes to attack and accuse you, just tell him, talk to my attorney, man. I got him on retainer, dude. He's ready to go at you. He's defeated. Amen? Amen. Now, y'all don't have to act excited, but I'm excited about this Word. Hallelujah. Me too, brother. Me too. Hallelujah. Resist Him firm in your faith. This is verse 9. Against His attack, rooted, established, and immovable. Are you rooted, established, and immovable? Or are you like the uh, house of cards? Enemy comes and huffs and puffs, blows a little bit on your cards, and they just kind of all crumble and fall. God wants you to get strong in Him and in the power of His might. Get your roots down deep in God. Amen? Amen. So when the enemy comes and attacks you and lies to you, remember Jesus said He's a liar from the beginning and the father of lies. Listen to what Jesus said. There is no truth in Him. None. Ah, oh, but you know, I remember yesterday though, when you had that flat tire and you said a couple cuss words, man. I heard that, and you know that's not what Christians do, man. They don't do that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Y'all hearing me? And that's when you can tell him, hey, you know what? I ain't perfect, but God's still working on me. In fact, His Word says that He's going to continue to work on me till the day of Jesus. He who has begun that good work is going to finish it till Jesus comes. Hallelujah. He's working in me according to His good pleasure. I'm just going to allow Him to do it. How about you? I'm just going to submit to Him and say, okay, Lord, I don't care how much this is going to hurt, but you go ahead. You all ever go to the dentist? You ever have a toothache have to go to the dentist? I'll tell you what, sometimes it hurts to go to the dentist, doesn't it? Takes that big old long needle. Sure seemed like it's about that long when he poked me. Sometimes the Holy Spirit, when He works on you, it's not going to feel comfortable. It ain't going to be easy. You hear me? But He's still going to work on you because He's got a great life for you to live. I know about you, but I'm going to take this oath today with you. I promise before God. Say it. I promise before God. I'm going to be happy. And I'm going to enjoy my life no matter what. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now you got to go live it. <laughs> Amen. Might as well. Hey, listen, as the world turns, you got one life to live, so you might as well enjoy it. Amen. Now, that ain't the word I got to preach to you this morning, but isn't that good? That is good. It's ministered to me all weekend and week, and I'll tell you what, it's been a tough week, but God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. Some of you think it's easy for a preacher, but it ain't easy. It really isn't. Hallelujah. I just love you all. I'm so happy that you are here. You made a good choice today to fellowship with the Lord your God. Make this fellowship that you have this morning work for you all week long, okay? Well, weren't these songs wonderful today? Didn't they do a great job? Hallelujah. Our regular drummer couldn't be here today, so our irregular drummer drummed today. (laughs) 
We are so happy for Martin's son to be here, to be free, to walk free in Jesus, to be the man of God that God's called him to be. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And as they used to say, I'll drink to that. Hey, that's some high quality H2O. Amen. All right, I don't know what to do next. Uh, y'all good? Ty, that's right. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> if you've got your offering, I'm going to have Ty come for the tithe. I got mine written out, so uh, now's the time to worship the Lord and you're giving. Amen. Remember, worship is more than just singing songs, it's actually worshiping Him and you're giving. Hallelujah. I enjoy giving my 10% to the Lord and a little extra. How many want God to be generous with you? Raise your hand. Me too. You know how one way to get God to be generous even more than ever? You be generous to Him. Lift this up. This is, we're sowing good seed into good ground. Father, we thank You this morning for Your blessing. Thank You for Your goodness and Your mercy. Thank You, Father God, for who we are in Christ and who Christ is within us. Lord, let that just percolate in our hearts. Let us explode with excitement and joy and happiness no matter the circumstances of our life, no matter what we feel. We trust in You more than what we feel, Lord. And we thank You for blessing this offering today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Here, Scott, I'm going to give you a couple things. My keys and my check. Thank you, brother. Amen. All right, announcements today. Um, if you'd like to be on the prayer line, we have a, a, a long prayer line where prayer requests are sent when somebody goes to the hospital and whatnot. Somebody needs prayer for their family. If you'd like to be on there to not be notified to pray, um, just see me after service and we'll get your name uh, in the... Uh, I think there's a sign-up thing over here somewhere, but we'll get your name and number so you can get that. I also write a thing called the morning meds four days a week. And uh, I text them usually to most people. I have been uh, messaging them to some. If you'd like to receive those, let me know. We'll get them for you. Uh, they're just like a little short encouraging message. Again, I want to thank the uh, folks for the food drive. We collected 181 cans. And Wednesday, we are having pizza at 5.30 to celebrate all your great giving. So if you want to come early Wednesday, you can come and have pizza. And then you can come and have Bible. Now, the pizza's got a little bit of stuff on it, but the Bible's got a lot of good stuff in it. So if you would get here, I think you'd be blessed. Amen? Hallelujah. What else am I forgetting, Shane? Celebrate Recovery right now is meeting at 6 on Tuesday and Friday. Tuesday for women, Friday for men. We're probably going to be altering that a little bit, but we'll let you know. Now, I want you to know some of you in here should be in recovery. Come to the recovery meetings because it's a great way for you to grow in your faith and to grow in your sobriety. Now, you might need to be sober from being a negative person. This is not just about drugs and alcohol. It's about really facing a lot of hurts, habits, and hang-ups that you just can't seem to shake. Hurts, habits, and hangovers, as Hannah put it. Was she here this morning? <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. But, uh, you know, I, I just want to encourage you, uh, ladies and guys, it's, it's confidential. Nobody knows you're here. We don't publish a list. So everything's held, you know, in, within the group, and we pray for one another. So, of course, today we're going to have our picnic at the uh, Pekin Riverfront Park right after service. I have got a badminton set. And, uh, you know, if, Gary, are you going to be able to come today? He's not sure, but I'll get a partner and we're taking on all comers. That's because you don't know this, but whoever wins get a $25 gift certificate at Walmart. So, I'm, you're there. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I went into Walmart the other day and uh, they recognize me when I come in now. They, they got a cot for me to go lay down and take a nap in because uh, I'm there so often. New Life's Got Talent. There's four jars out here in the foyer that have different themes in them. What we're trying to do is raise a little extra money for New Life's Got Talent to uh, send the kids to Momentum in, is it October or November? November? First weekend in November, Becky, isn't it, usually? Yeah, Becky knows. Uh, first weekend in November, we send the kids down to Springfield. They stay one night. They go on Friday. They have a huge service for all the, the youth group. It's What's the ages? 13 to 12 to... I don't even know what... 
11 to 18. We saw Building 429 down there before. I think uh, other Christian bands are down there. It's just a lot of fun for the kids. And then Saturday, they have different workshops for the kids to go to, you know, dealing with uh, life, dealing with stress, dealing with bullying, dealing with all these different things and from a, a Christian perspective. So it's a really, really good two-day seminar for them. That's what this is all about. If you'd like to sponsor a kid, I think it's like $70 will we'll pay for their their weight, eighty dollars. Okay, thank you. Eighty dollars pays for their food, right? No, pays for the gas and the room, right? Ticket to get in. Okay. All right. So about about a hundred dollars per student is basically that'll help. That'll pay for their night to stay. We get a real we get really inexpensive rooms, and we put about ten kids in one room. It's a, they really they don't sleep. Let's put it that way. But, you know, we've tried it with four, and they don't sleep either, so we just thought, well, we'll save the money, you know. But, no, I'm just kidding. But, anyway, that's out here. If you'd like to vote for a theme, put change in the bottle. All right, what am I forgetting? All right, next Saturday at 10 is Women's Fellowship. Women's Fellowship will start up again in September. That's at 10 o'clock. I'm not sure what theme they're using, but uh, I, I don't know. Debbie's down, That's right, Debbie's down the street. So we're in the book. A heart like David. <laughs> We're on chapter 20 or 21, so that's Women's Fellowship next Saturday morning at 10. Just come. You'll enjoy it. Yeah. And then next Saturday also at 6 is Book Fellowship. And we are in uh, Rick Warren's book, Purpose Driven Life. We've really been doing a, It's been an excellent study. So that's, uh, you're free to come. We'd love to have you there. It's a great fellowship time. We usually have something chocolate. I figure if they're having chocolate, I'm going. And the Bible too. Chocolate, Bible, wow. That's awesome. So anyway, that's next Saturday at 6 in the gathering room. And then next Sunday night at 6, we will have our first uh, Sunday night service starting this fall. So theme is probably going to be who is and what does the Holy Spirit do. So that's kind of where we're going to be. Any questions about that? Well, good. I must have done a good job then. I used to be a teacher, and when the students didn't have a lot of questions and they understood it, you kind of felt good. All right, so we're going to dismiss these wonderful children to Kids Zone, right? Aren't we? Yes. It's the most wonderful time of the service. Wow. Love these children. God bless the wonderful teachers that are teaching them too. Amen. Hallelujah. Appreciate so much those that volunteer to do this. Hallelujah. Kid Zone is ages 4 to about 11. Amen. All right. The rest of you, if you would stand with me, please. We're going to pray. I promise not to be long-winded this morning. I know. (laughs) Bow your heads with me if you would. Father, I just count it an honor and a privilege to be here today. An honor and a privilege to serve you in this way. And an honor and privilege, Father God, to be with these wonderful people. Lord, we just pray in these next few moments that you'd open our hearts and minds to hear what the Spirit of God would say to the church in this hour. We might be prepared to meet the challenges of this generation. Father God, as we're closer and closer to your coming, we know that the book says that things are going to get worse and worse, but the church is going to get better and better. We thank you for that promise, Lord, and that that guarantee from you that that's the way it's going to go. So open up our minds, Holy Spirit. You are the great teacher. Let me keep my opinions to myself, and we thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hug one person before you're seated. Tell them you love them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right, after you do that, you can go ahead and be seated for a second if you would. We're going to... uh, Got a short word for you today. Hallelujah. I don't expect to get very far. Amen. Amen. Before I uh, go a whole lot further, um, 
I'll tell you, this week the Lord's just been ministering to me. This is the 11th year of New Life Fellowship. This August, 11 years ago, we started the church uh, down the street. So yes, amen. Thank God for that. And the Lord's been so gracious to us during this last 11 years. Um, for you that have been here for a while, and some of you that have been here for a while know that it's been a really smooth, easy road. Never had any problems at all. I'm sorry, that's not true. I, I, I need to be honest with you. It's been difficult at times, hasn't it? You know, there's been tough things to go through. So many gut checks. But uh, I don't know about you, but there's times that the Lord needs to continue to remind me I'm right where he, I need to be, that He's doing what He needs to be doing, and and uh, the, the, the project that He's started is not finished yet, and He's still continuing to work on that and build on that and build on you. Um, because the church is you, right? You know that. It's not this building. It's not a program. It's you. You are the church of the living God. If God can just get you happy for a little bit and it starts to flow out of you and bubble up to somebody else, then He's accomplished a great thing. Many of you that are here have faced terrible tests and trials in your life. Some of you have come through terrible addictions. Parents and families that were just not very healthy. And you're bearing the scars of that even yet today in your present relationships. God wants to change that. Did you hear me? He wants to change that. He wants to make you so healthy that people are amazed that you're even alive. Ty was telling me today that there was a guy at work, he told him, the guy said, I don't know how you handle your frustration. And Ty said, well, I, I have faith in God and I go to church. He said, you go to church? Ty, you do? Ty said, yeah, with every tattoo on me, I go to church. That's a good thing. It's a good thing that Ty's got that presence of mind to share Christ with people. And God wants you to know this morning, He wants you to be happy with the life you have. Quit trying to have somebody else's or wish you had that one. Take the one you have and be happy in it. That is the challenge God's giving you today. Some say, well, when I get over there, then I'll be happier. When I get that, when I get that done, no. Right now, today, in this day, in this hour, be happy with where you are. Be thankful for where you are. Man, I'll tell you, we've got to be thankful, my brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. I was in Walmart earlier today getting the chicken, and there was a guy that came in there. He's about my age. Had to drive one of those little carts around because he can't walk. And I thought, you know, Father God, thank you that I can walk. I know it's, I take it for granted. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Father, that I got my health. There's a lot of people that don't have their health. Aren't you glad you do? I said, thank you, Lord, I got my mental health. Mostly, and uh, he's still working on that part. You know, I got a lot of way to go on that, but you know. So, I'm just so excited about that. And then this week, I had a chance to uh, have lunch with uh, Gary and Monica. But uh, one of the things that he said that Gary said to me that's been just reverberating in my mind all week, and God had to remind me because when I came here in 2006, I knew the Lord sent us down here for hurting, broken, stumbling, bumbling people. We didn't come down here for the rich and the famous. We came down here to touch lives that would never go to church. In fact, I was explaining this to the, uh, the guy who cleans Gold's Gym. He and I get into talks every once in a while. His name's Ron. And uh, Ron said, well, I'm going to come down here and visit your church sometime. I said, that'd be great, Ron. He said, what kind of church is it? I said, well, you know, Ron, we got a lot of people in our churches. They're hurting. They're broken. They've been through divorce. They've been through all kinds of disappointments and discouragements. Some would say that in many ways the church gave up on them. And some of them come and they said, if it wasn't for this place, I'd never set my foot into a church. I wouldn't think I'd ever be welcome somewhere like this. Look at me for a minute. You are welcome here all the time. Amen? Not only are you welcome here, but I loved it this morning that someone came down. This thing, this place right here for prayer is open for you anytime you need it. Are you, are you hearing me? I don't care. Look at me for a minute. I don't care if you feel so broken up and so confused and you start coming on Wednesdays, you come down front and you pray. You come on Sunday mornings, you come down front and pray. You come on Sunday nights, you come down on front and pray. And you do that for six months or a year, forever. I don't care. That's what this place is for. I remember one time over in Peoria, Brother Dawson's church said, this is not a hospital for... Or a, yeah." This is not a not a hospital. This is a hospital for sinners, not a resort for saints. 
We're here to touch lives that are lost and broken like yours and mine. Okay? And we want to see God change those lives and make them new like yours and mine. Amen? Amen. That's why I'm trying to tell you, and, and God's trying to minister this Word to you, if you've got problems, Amen! Start laughing through them a little bit. Quit making it so dead gum serious that you can't enjoy yourself. Oh God, I need to change that. He knows that. It's good for you to tell Him that. You know what repentance is, right? Repentance is a Greek word. Metanoia. Change your thinking. Or in this, this is the modern vernacular, change your stinking thinking. Because we all got stinking thinking, right? Amen? Hallelujah. Including yours truly. I have it too. I was reminded this week of really the mission of Derby Street New Life Fellowship. I was telling Ron, Ron was asking me, now where is your church? I said, well, we're right next to a tattoo parlor across the street from a liquor store. In fact, I tell people, you know where the tattoo... Yeah, I know where that's at on Derby. Well, we're right next door. You are? I didn't know there was a building there. You know where Yogi Blair Liquor is at or Yogi Liquor or whatever it's called? Yeah, oh yeah, I know that place. We're across the street, man. We're right where we need to be. And I'll tell you, the best advertisement in the world of New Life Fellowship is you. Where do you go to church, New Life Fellowship? Why do you go there? Because they love me? Because I can go there and I can wear my blue jeans and have a pimple on the end of my nose and nobody says nothing to me? They still love me? Hallelujah. They might offer me clear sill for that, but whatever. Hallelujah. Well, I was reminded that this is the emergency room of the church. And I never really, I hadn't thought about it that way. I used to think of it that way many years ago, but it kind of got lost a little bit. And it was a good, good reminder. So I want to thank Gary for reminding him about that, you know, and uh, that we are. We are the emergency room of the church. I was just in the emergency room with Debbie. And we sat there for an hour while she writhed in pain with her finger just, just hurting so much, her index, right index finger. When you go down and see her today, she's got a blue cast on and these two fingers stick out. And it's amazing what she had to go through. Chrissy, you probably understand that. You go through that stuff yourself. But, you know, they, they cut her finger all the way from here all the way down into the palm of her hand and stitched it. She looked like Frankenstein. You know, but we sat there in the emergency room and uh, Gary was reminding me this morning what kind of doctors do they put in the ER? The worst doctors or the best doctors? Well, usually they put the trauma doctor in there that's pretty good. Pretty good at assessing the problem and trying to get the treatment. That's why you're here. You're here because God assessed your problem. He's given you the treatment. And now when you invite somebody else, you're going to help God assess their problem. You're going to respond when He assesses it. And you're going to help them come to health. Woohoo! I think it's pretty exciting. You are in the ministry. This idea that there's uh, clergy laity stuff. You are in the ministry every day when you go to work, every day when you go to the bank, every day when you do whatever you do. You are in the ministry. Somebody was telling me, you know, uh, I've learned a lot about certain things. I've been sharing it with other people and said, you know what? That's a ministry. Amen? So look at me and say this with me one more time. I am God's own. And I am His minister. In Jesus' name. Amen. And you are. All right. Now, that's not what I was going to preach this morning, but I just wanted to let you know that. I'll tell you, I'm full of it today. We're lucky we don't. We're lucky we got to leave early because I'd preach to you till about three o'clock in the afternoon. We then we'd stop and have dinner, and then we'd go back and have some more. <laughs> Cole would love that. He's clapping. I love Cole. Cole is my biggest fan. Amen. I love that little boy. Hallelujah. He can get rowdy too, but that's okay. We've been on this uh, journey with Abraham. And uh, I've been reading a book called Jasher. Some of you don't know what that book is, but it's a historical book, like the book of Josephus. It's not canon, but it explains a few extra things about Abram and what he went through and, and how he acquired the wealth that he acquired. God blessed him. But he's going to discover more about the true nature of God on this journey that he's taking from a place called Haran to a place called Canaan 
All right, he's going to go on this journey, and it's a challenging journey for Abram to take. We're challenged not only to hear the word, but also to get up and practice it. Right? Say amen. amen. You got to practice this stuff. Amen? amen. Does anybody know who Larry Bird is? Who is Larry Bird? He's a basketball player, right? Was he very good? Yeah. <laughs> The guy was outstandingly good. All right, he's from French Lick, Indiana. I went to Eastern Illinois, which is in Charleston, right across the, the, the line is Terre Haute. <clears throat> so I knocked around some of these same areas that Larry Bird did. Somebody said, "Well, how did he get to be so good? It was just natural talent, right?" Well, what he did is he took 500 shots with the basketball from different places on the court every day. That'd be tiring. But because he practiced every day taking them shots, he became an All-American. Then he played for the Boston Celtics, and they won the NBA title. Just a little thing. And now he's in the NBA Hall of Fame. How did he get there? Because <clears throat> he was so tall and handsome and talented? Actually, he was none of the three. He was 6'8", but that's not tall in the NBA. That's because he practiced. You've got to start practicing the Word in your daily life. God wants to be in every part of your life. You've got to begin to practice that. When you go to the grocery store, Father, here I go. Help me now. God, I need some help. Hallelujah. They love me in Walmart. <laughs> they see me coming. They're already asking me for my debit card. you just got to take God with you everywhere you go. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Abram decided it was time to move. To get out and to go to. He had to get out of where he is at. He's got to go to where God wants him. So do you. you got to get out of the rut you're in and go to the place where God wants you to be in. Amen. So Abram packs his tent and took a step knowing it was for his advantage. He takes it one step at a time. When you go a step at a time, your faith will grow in every step because it's for your advantage. Amen. Amen. 3 John 2. You don't have this one, Shane. 3 John 2. God desires that you prosper. Woohoo! Aren't you glad? Boy, I want that. I want the prosperity of God. Don't you? And how does that happen? He'll prosper the way you think. You'll no longer think of yourself as nothing, as worthless. You'll no longer think of yourself as the, as, with pride. Okay? But you begin to think of yourself the way Jesus thinks of you. That's prospering. Amen? You no longer have envy and jealousy and anger and bitterness. You let those things go. Do what? Let them go. <laughs> Amen. He will, you prosper, he's, she, John says, and be in health. God wants you to be healthy in the way you think, right? In the way you talk, and in the way you act. But there's a chain that has to happen in you for the actions to result. You know where it starts. I've said this before many times. It starts with your faith. What do you really, truly believe? You know how God find, lets you find out that? He lets you get squeezed by your bad choices, your circumstances, and the events of life, and then you'll see what comes out of you. Because Jesus said, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, you're not going to even know what's in yourself till you get squeezed. Once He starts to squeeze you, through those circumstances, the stuff comes out. You know why God does that? So I feel miserable. No. He does it so you will say, okay, Lord, I need to change this. Are you ready to change? Amen. Amen. Make some change. Amen, God. Make some change in me, Lord. I need that change. Hallelujah. He wants you to prosper and be in health. But here is the kicker. Okay? Listen, this is, this is the really important part of all this. Prosper. Who wants to prosper? Oh, come on, get your hand up. Let's go, children. Yes, some have two hands up. They want to prosper twice as much. How many want to be in health? Man, I want to, I want to be in health mentally, emotionally, right? All that. He says in this word, you'll prosper and be in health. Whose baby is that? As... <laughs> oh, isn't she cute? As me. What a little pickle puss. Alright. So He wants you to prosper and be in health even as your soul is prosper. What is your soul? Mind, will, and emotions. Correct? 
you can't prosper, you can't be in health until this thing is in health. In other words, if you have a sick heart, look at me for a minute, we all have sick hearts. And if we let that sick heart dominate us, then what's going to happen in our life is going to be sick too. I believe this with all my heart, my brothers and sisters. When you begin to get healthy mentally, you'll begin to get healthy physically. Dr. Carolyn Leaf, we went through her books, Who Switched Off My Brain, How to Switch On Your Brain. We went through both of them in our Saturday Book Fellowship. Was that not rich? Was that not interesting? Was it not true? She said there's a connection between your mind and your body that goes on all the time. When you get anxious, it produces toxins in your brain. Listen to me. It produces toxins in your brain that go into your bloodstream that are carried throughout your entire body. That's why when you get worried and you feel your pulse rate increase, you feel a little sick in your stomach, that's that mind-body connection, right? All right. For you to be healthy and to prosper the way God wants you to prosper in your thinking, in your emotions, in all that you feel and all that you believe, right? You got to get healthy in your soul. Because listen to me, when you start telling yourself when you get up in the morning, good morning, Lord, instead of good morning. <laughs> oh, Lord. You know, it's good morning, Lord. Okay? You're, you're sending positive, right? Chemicals in your brain. Those positive chemicals that cre get created, they go down through the bloodstream and they minister to an, your entire body and it makes you feel better. You have a little more pep in your step. A little more smile on your face. Remember to smile, it increases your face value. So you got to smile. Amen. Hallelujah. Be happy. If God can get the happiness in the souls of His people and the joy of God be in their strength, not the joy of happenings, but the joy of God be in their strength, the joy of the Lord. Wow. And you can give the devil a black eye. Instead of going to work with your grumbling and complaining, you know, oh boy, oh woe is me. You go to work like, praise God, Lord, I get to serve you today. I get to serve you today driving this thing. Or I get to serve you today packing those boxes. I get to serve you today whatever I'm doing. Hallelujah. And those people around you are going, why are you so happy, man? You used to be miserable on this job. Well, I don't know. I gave it to the Lord. I'm happy in God. I don't care anymore. He gave me this assignment. And bless God, I'm going to do it with all of my heart and all of my strength to the best of my ability, even if it kills me. Hallelujah. And you know what? In the spiritual realm, the only good Christian is a dead one anyway. Amen? We live for God and we die to self. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Amen. That's good preaching. Hallelujah. I like that. Woohoo! I might just have to do a little dance around here. Y'all y'all think I'm freaking out. Yeah, we went to church. Pastor Mark looked like he was doing cocaine or something. Man, the guy was flipped out. I, no, no cocaine here. Yep, I took the pill. The gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woohoo! Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. I need all the help I can get. Hallelujah. So this is how Abram's going to receive the blessings and the plan of God. It's by taking action and taking one step at a time. And that's the way you're going to experience it too. Hallelujah. By going and receiving. I wonder what kind of attitude Abram had in the morning when he got up. Now listen, he had a tent, right? And some people think that all, his, all the people that went with him that attached themselves to Abram was over a thousand people that were traveling with him. That's a big caravan, folks. Did he greet everybody with a smile when he got up in the morning? Hey, Sarah, it's time to go. Aren't you ready? Sarah's like, man, we've been doing this for ten days, man. And I could just hear some of his friends. Hey, Abram, yeah, we there yet? We there yet? We there yet? <laughs> I wonder if he greeted everybody with a smile. How's your morning face? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God needs to make a change. Hallelujah. Abram set out on a great adventure. Some of you need to start re-looking at your life as a great adventure instead of a great mistake. Amen? Hallelujah.
Now, Abram's doing this to get to Canaan. Hallelujah. He's getting it to go to a place called Canaan. You're doing it to get to a place called healthy. The kingdom of God. Woohoo! Your walk with God should be this great adventure. So Abram gets out. <clears throat> Genesis 12, 1. Now in Haran, the Lord had said to Abram, Go away from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to a land I'm going to show you. Now, as the population of the earth was growing at this time, there was a lot of people that were migrating in this place called the Fertile Crescent. I don't know if you still have that picture or not anywhere buried in there. That fertile it's a picture of <clears throat> basically of Mesopotamia. It's what we call it uh, today, but it's where Ur of the Chaldees was all the way up to Haran, all the way down to Canaan, was called the Fertile Crescent. You had the Tigris and the Euphrates River. You all get in the picture? You have the Tigris and the Euphrates River. <clears throat> and then you got this Fertile Crescent that goes down next to the Mediterranean Sea, down into where modern-day Israel is at. That is the place that Abram journeyed. All right? There were a lot of people moving along the road that time. A lot of the time of migration. But this particular nomad was being directed by God. And so are you. He said, walk. I think you can see it right there. Well, sort of. That's not it. That's, that's Egypt. We need to go over this far. Different, different map. Don't worry about it, Shane. No big deal. I think everybody got, you got the picture right. All right. <clears throat> he said, go out from your land, your extended family, and your father's house to the land I'm going to show you. And God's call to us is similar as well. I'm going to show you how some. It's difficult sometimes just to walk away from all we've known or something we've known for our whole lives to something unknown. Some people get anxious when there's a whole lot going on and they get anxious when there's nothing going on. They're just anxious. And when they stay in that state of mind, they make bad decisions. They get hurt. And you know the old saying from uh, the treatment program is hurting people do what? They hurt people. People who are hurt will hurt others. That's just the way that it is until God gets a hold of your life and makes a few changes. we got to trust in the Lord to walk away from those feelings and walk into health. Lord, help me with my anxiety. I no longer want to feel anxious all the time anymore. Can you please help me with that? And God will answer that prayer and He will help you. Amen? Hebrews 11.8 says this, By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. You've got an inheritance you're walking into right now and you don't realize it. What is that inheritance? God's given you a great inheritance in Him. How many people would like more peace in your life? Keep your hand up. Guess what? You've already got it. The peace of God lives in you. All you got to do when you get unpeaceful is look to yourself. Hey, self. Yeah? Be at peace. Say what? Be at peace. Be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. He was called out to go to a place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, listen to this, not knowing where he was going. Now, I wish Steve would never put that clock up there. <clears throat> I love Brother Steve and miss him a lot. Okay. Um, let's do this. Gary's cave has so graciously decided to be my guinea pig this morning. He did. Thank you, Gary. All right. So, Gary, I need you to take your glasses off. And... We're going to tie this around you as a, hopefully, can you see through it at all? As long as you can see a little, that's good. All right, I'm going to lead you step sideways over here a little bit. It's right, right there, there you go. All right, that's Abraham walking by faith, not knowing where he is going. It's time, my brothers and sisters, to learn to live by, not by what you see, with your physical eye, but what you see with your spiritual eye. 
right? This is the journey that Abraham's going to have to take. Abram's going to take. So Gary is fo- going to follow my voice. So Gary, just go ahead and take three or four steps forward. Keep going. Keep going. When I tell you to stop, stop. Stop. Okay? So he's following my voice, isn't he? All right? I don't want you to follow anybody else's voice. Scott, call him and tell him to come to you. Come this way. He's not going to do it because he's not going to go that way. He's following the voice of the Lord. The Lord's leading him, right? You follow on this. That's exactly what you're in right now. You are walking just like Abram. Sometimes you're never going to be able to see. Now, here's here I'm going to give you a couple of bags to carry. So here's one. Is it heavy? <laughs> I'll take your glasses and give them to Scott to hold for me. Thank you, Scott. Take this other thing. There you go. Now, you think it's going to be a little bit harder for him to walk this way? It is, isn't it? Right? But what happens if while he's walking, we got a terrible obstacle? All right? And the Lord's saying, all right, Gary, uh, are, are, do you want to drop your past and leave it go? Would you like to let go of your past? Okay, that's in your left hand. You can set that down. A lot easier to walk that way, isn't it? The other, the other one, he can't let go of it because you know why? It's got his issues in it. We all got issues. Got issues. All right, take one step forward. Just one step. Okay, now go to your right one step. Step forward. Step forward again. Go to your left. God will guide you around the obstacles if you let Him. But you've got to let Him. You've got to follow His voice. You're all on this journey and you're in one place or another in this journey. So was Abram. He journeyed to a land that he didn't know where it was at and where he was going. In your Christian life, sometimes you're not going to know where you're going. So you've got to do what? You must unlearn what you have learned. I don't know how many people are into Star Wars in here, but Obi Wan to Luke Skywalker. You must learn not to trust your senses. Feel with the force. We feel with the spirit. Much more real than that. Hallelujah. All right, Gary, you can set that down. You can take the blindfold off. Thank you for being a volunteer. Give him a hand. Amen. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, thank you, brother. Scott's got your glasses. Amen. All right. I hope you got something out of that today. Praise God. You can go home, tell somebody, yep, today in church they blindfolded somebody and he used VBS for something. I don't remember what it was. but Hallelujah. Stand with me. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brett. All right. It's okay to have issues, my brothers and sisters. We all do. Amen? Do this if you would. Bow your heads with me for just a second. Hallelujah. While everybody's heads are bowed, eyes closed for just a second, I want to give you an opportunity in this room. Maybe you've never asked Jesus into your heart before. Never asked Him to forgive you of your sins and to come into your life. He's knocking on the door of your heart. He wants in. He's just saying this morning, if you'll just believe in Jesus, believe in the Son, you can have a brand new life. If you've never done that before, and you're saying, Pastor Mark, I need to do this this morning, just raise your hand if that's you. Anybody that needs to pray to receive Christ this morning. Excuse me. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. All right, maybe this morning as well. Some of you feel like uh, you've been walking with a blindfold on. (laughs) But you want to follow Jesus with your whole life. You want to give up and surrender and give it all to Him. If that's you, put your hand up in the air. Amen. Keep them up there for a second. Hallelujah. Father, thank You for these that have their hands up. I pray this morning in the name of Jesus for a great move of Your Spirit on their life. That they'll be enjoying Your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, bless them abundantly in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Pray that 
He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in your inner person this morning. Hallelujah. That He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner person. That Christ may dwell in your heart through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love will be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God this morning. To Him who is able to exceedingly abundantly do above all we ask or think according to that power that works within us, let that flow into your people's lives this week. Let them have a hilarious week, Lord. Let them look at their life as fun as and excitement as challenges so that they can walk with you not by sight, but by faith. We thank you for that now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. I would be remiss if I did not allow this opportunity. If anybody needs prayer this morning before we dismiss, if you need prayer, quickly come down front. Hallelujah. Just line up side by side here real quick. Please hang, hang steady for just a minute as we do this. Please don't leave yet. Just hang out. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards these that are down here this morning. Hallelujah. Father, thank You for the encouragement of Jesus upon Your daughter. Thank You that You're growing her up in You, Father. Thank You for the blessings of Jesus on Your daughter. Hallelujah. Let her be so concerned about the spiritual things that the, the mundane things of life just fall right into place and that she'll enjoy every minute of it, every, every second of it in the name of Jesus. Thank You for Your blessing of healing. Thank You, Father God, for a new presence of mine. Oh, hallelujah. Thank You, man of God, anointing Him with Your presence and Your Spirit. Jesus, touch Him, God. I come against everything that would come against Him. Yes. Command it to stop in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> when you wake up and you feel like you're wrong, just continue to tell yourself, I know I'm right in Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, thank You for this daughter. Thank You for these daughters, Lord. Thank You for touching them and helping them, strengthening and blessing them, Father, in Jesus' name. In the inner woman, God, let them be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Come against the, the sickness of Satan that would try to enter them. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. Thank You, Father. Touch Dakota, Lord. I pray for a, just an overwhelming presence of God to move in Him. Hallelujah. You just need to tell the Lord you're sorry and let Him work and move in you. He wants to do a great work in you, Dakota. He's not finished with you yet. Hallelujah. Don't you give up or lose heart. Don't you give up because you don't have this or that. God's saying, you have me and I'm the greatest thing you'd ever have. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Anything in particular you'd like me to pray for you about? Thank for a second. Okay. Okay. Amen. Amen. Wants to be make good, quality, godly decisions. Well, Father, that's your heart's desire, so He's hearing from you. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that He will surrender His will. That's where the struggle is at, brother. It's in your will, just to say, okay, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. I ask you to help me know what I'm doing. You direct me. Because the Lord wants to direct to direct you into great things, greater things, life, happiness. The happiness you seek is not found in uh, stuff and things and people. It's found in Him. You're not convinced of that yet, but the Holy Spirit is saying you're really close. So surrender to me. Surrender your will to me. Don't rebel. Just allow me to work in you. You'll make good quality decisions. Amen. He hears the cry of your heart. He hears the integrity of your heart in the cry. And God's going to help you make right decisions as you submit it to Him. So if you are going to do something, just always do this. Father, what do you think? Father God, what do you think I should do? Father, I'm going to make this decision. What should I do? And He'll direct you and help you to do it. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Bless these girls, Lord. I thank You for these young handmaidens of the Lord. 
women of God. God, as you grow them up into you, help them to also make good decisions. Now, I sense this, and I'm not trying to pick on either one of you, but I'll tell you what, you've got to be careful of the choices you make with the opposite sex. You need to be really careful because the enemy's out there to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to take your happiness and your young life and destroy it. Don't let him. Father, I pray a hedge of protection around them now in Jesus' name. Satan, you can't cross the line. I rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. You are so precious to your Father God. He loves you so much. Please don't let the world convince you that you can settle for less and be happy. Please don't do that. Instead, say no to the world, no to the enemy, and yes, yes to the Lord God because He's got great plans for you. Great plans for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> plans for joy and happiness. Plans for a good family. But it comes from Him. So look to Him for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless this young lady, Lord. I thank You for her, Lord God. Hallelujah. There's a real precious sweetness about You and a real preciousness that the Lord would say to you to stay soft and humble before Him. <clears throat> Just like these other girls, the Lord wants to warn you, be careful. Be careful of those boys out there. Some of them have nothing but hurt in their hearts for you. And God has nothing but joy and happiness and health and healing for you. So walk softly before the Lord your God. Great plans He has for you. And I just keep hearing this in my spirit. God's saying to you, you are a little different. That's good. He's made you different on purpose. You're a very special person, very unique in God. And that's good. He's made you that way. So don't, don't listen to people that say this or that about you, but just hear what the Lord is saying. I've made you with a special purpose in a special way. You are mine. You are a little different, and that is a good thing. Enjoy it. Hallelujah. Be the woman of God that He's created you. Father, I also pray a hedge of protection around this woman of God. You protect her, Lord. Keep her safe and sound. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I thank You for the healing virtue of Christ flowing into Your daughter as You continue to bless her with healing. Hallelujah. I know You're going to continue to use her to minister to others. Hallelujah. That's such a big thing for the two of you. Ministry to others. Hallelujah. And I want to thank You for ministering to me. You guys greatly encouraged me the other day. It was a blessing to be with you both. I thank You now, Father, that You're going to use Monica and that You're going to continue to heal her of those issues she knows that she has. I thank You, Lord God. She's going to walk above and not beneath. She's going to walk over them in Jesus' name. Just like Gary walked around that chair today, she's going to walk around and through and over those, uh, uh, those things that are in her way. And she's going to continue with You, Father. Thank You for the peace of God and the blessing of God on her kids and her family. In the name of Jesus. I just hear this over and over in my heart. This is just the beginning. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Hallelujah. All right. You are dismissed. Head down to the riverfront. We're going to have lunch. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.